Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting. And today we have a great guest. His name is Austin Nestle. He runs a podcast. It's called Yo Pro Wealth, and it's all about money advice for the working professional. Austin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jasper, man. I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. So it's good to have you and I'm uh, excited to hear a little bit more about your story and your background. So why don't you give us a little bit of information on that? Yeah, sure. So uh, growing up, I went through the same system that everybody else did. I went to college, thought I was going to go work uh, up, work my way up the corporate ladder. And I did that for five and a half years as an engineer. But a couple years in, I decided, you know, maybe the corporate world isn't right for me long term. And I started to get the entrepreneurial itch, start to get the travel bug. And last year, I quote unquote retired. And uh, but before that, I built my fund up on the side. I started an investment company while I was still working. And I built that up until I quote unquote retired. And then I traveled around for eight months, mostly using Airbnb. And now I just help people with personal finance and mindset advice and travel around and just uh, coming out with a book and a podcast and just doing a lot of different things, man. So it's all exciting. Awesome. Um, did you have a lot of savings when you quit your corporate job? Because I, I know it's it can be quite a scary step to make. Yeah, well, I actually started making more money on the side than I was making from the corporate job. So it, it, okay. it was all passive income. So basically, I created my own investing algorithm and I automated it. So then I would just turn on the program in the morning, I'd go to work, I'd come home from work and I'd turn off the program, see if I made money or lost money. So I had a uh, uh, about 15 years up in savings and then I had passive income coming in. So I was actually in a, a pretty good position to, uh, that's why I call it retirement because I don't call it retirement as far as not doing anything. I call it retirement as far as doing whatever you want, having that freedom, because I think that's the all, the goal that we're all, that we're all going for, right? Is that freedom to do what we want, when we want, where we want. And, uh, fortunately I've been able to do that. And now I try to help other people do that. Awesome. That's great, man. And what about your travels? Where where have you been? Yeah, so over the last 8 months I've been to probably 20 something country or 20 something states within the United States and then um also Southeast Asia. I went to Thailand, I went to Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. Uh, spent uh, over 30 days over there. Took my sister and uh it was just an amazing amazing time and um <laughs> you know I've always wanted to just leave and travel and, and Thailand has been at the top of my list for a while now. And when I got there, I was like, this is everything I've ever imagined and more. I mean, you got the beaches, you got the great food, you got the great nightlife, you got cheap prices. It's just absolutely amazing. So it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I figured now that I am out of the corporate world, it was the time to do it. So that's what I've done. Okay, cool. And what made you decide to use Airbnb for your traveling? Well, I don't know how I initially heard about it, but uh, being a personal finance guy, so I'm, I'm frugal by nature, and if I could spend a third the price using Airbnb as I would in a hotel, then I figured it would just make sense. And actually, I started using Airbnb last November when my lease ended on my apartment in Houston, Texas, and I took all my stuff and put it in storage, and then it was just me, my bag, actually two bags, basically my laptop, my phone, a few other things, so some clothes. And I was like, this is the life I want to live. Like, It's very simple. It's very easy. I could jump around. And what people don't really understand is the secret to business or one of the secrets to business is the subscription model, right? So when people are paying a mortgage or when people are paying monthly rent, they're paying every single day. But when you use the a la carte method like Airbnb, so I travel a lot. So, for instance, in Houston, I would be 
in Houston for four days, but then I'd be somewhere else for three days and I wouldn't, I'd still be paying for my place. Right. Yes. So I, I figured it's such a great opportunity to live this simple lifestyle, to travel around, to s pay way less money and, and really take advantage of the, of the system, if you will. And, mm -hmm. uh, I started using Airbnb and I loved it. And some people, especially my family, thought I was crazy. And it's some people's nightmare. But if, if you're willing to travel, it's just an amazing opportunity. I've had, I don't know, probably 50 different stays. And I've had 50 great experiences. I mean, it's been just unbelievable. So as long as somebody has reviews, you really know what you're going to get. And I haven't felt unsafe or anything at all. So it's been just awesome. So just to just to be clear here, you've used Airbnb as a traveler, or have you also hosted people? I have not hosted people yet, but I'm trying to get my friends to all host for people. Okay. <laughs> so you've stayed over fi at 50 different places on Airbnb. Yeah. So you're probably one of the most experienced Airbnb travelers that we've talked to. Mm. So uh, that's great, because I'm sure our listeners where uh, most people are, are hosting on Airbnb. So I'm, I'm sure they would love to hear some of your stories and some advice that you may have for, for our hosts. So let's start with, um, can, you, can you give us a, a bad experience and a really good experience? Um, the only somewhat bad experience I had was when one place was pretty dirty and... <laughs> I think sometimes in the reviews, people are, are generally tend to be on the nice side, um, but uh, th they're really pretty accurate as well. I mean, if somebody has fives across the board on, on different the different topics and then they have a three on cleanliness, then that usually means they're about a two or one and a half on cleanliness, right? But uh, that, that's the only small thing. But for me, it's, it's a place to sleep. It's just like a hotel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a place to shower and sleep. Other than that, um, you, you should be out wherever you're uh, wherever you're visiting, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I would say is to don't think of it as just a hotel. So I've done anywhere from one night stays to two month stays. And, you know, I've, I've, I live up in Chicago, so I'm only going to be there until it's cold. So I have a two month stay there and then I'll go somewhere else. And mm -hmm. I think it's really flexible and you get also discounted rates when you stay longer term as well. So don't mm -hmm. limit it to, to what people just think about. But um, as far as a great experience, I mean, they've all been really good. The, the best thing for me is paying a third of the price of a hotel, but being in a premium location. I don't care what size it is. I don't care how many nice things they have. If it's a great location and it's clean, that's that's a perfect spot for me. So I've had a number of opportunities to, to do that in big cities, Chicago, San Diego, all these different cities where it's, it gets pretty expensive. Uh, you can really find some some gems in there. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I found works best is, is plan out if you, if you get it at least a month in advance, you have a little bit more choosing than you do if you do it five days in advance. But sometimes people will uh, open up um, their schedule and, and something will pop up last minute. So it's pretty, it's pretty perfect. I mean, if you find any situation where you can have a win-win between a customer and a seller, then you have a great business idea. And Airbnb's done that. And now um, Uber's done that with cars. I mean, it's the same exact model, you know, so it's just brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you do you recall any any host that you connected with, in particularly, or or, or maybe you've you spent some time um, during your stay connecting with the host or, or doing things together? Uh, I haven't done many things together, but that's another great benefit of having a, a, ho a local host. There is they know the the uh, local spots to go they give you the, the guidance of where you should stay away from mm -hmm. and it's really a, a it's it's better than a concierge because a lot of times a concierge at a hotel has vested interest in something for whatever reason whether they're getting paid or whether it's just closest or whatever but the uh the uh, hosts through airbnb are much more real they're you get to connect with them and talk with them a little bit more so i've had pretty much awesome hosts all around one lady talked quite a bit and and was really using airbnb secretly as like friendships right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so she's you know which amazing lady really nice lady but at the same time i was like all right it's time to go for me you know i, I need to get out of here so uh, but right. uh, all, all awesome people all around and you know anybody that's willing to open up their house 90 
percent of the time they're they're pretty good uh communicative people right mm -hmm. and uh it's that's the experiences i've had right yeah that's great and that's one of the things that uh that as a host we have to be thoughtful of sort of to get an idea whether our guest wants to be really yeah. communicative communicative with us and wants to hang out and, and do all these things or if our guest wants to just kind of have his own time and his own privacy and just keep to, kind of keep to themselves right right so that's something that uh that a host has to estimate upon arrival um so yeah and, and on that point um a couple people did did had a pretty good practice of emailing beforehand uh, with some questions, just, hey, what are you in town for? Is it business? Is it a pleasure? What's your schedule going to be like? Is there anything in particular that you would like or, or not like? Um, so, yeah, if you can really just get a good understanding ahead of time, I think it really makes everybody's transition pretty smooth once once they come in. Absolutely. That's a, that's a really great point. And by asking your guests what they're going to do and what they're planning is like, you also show that you want to help them, right? Because yeah. that's the information that enables you as a host to make your guest stay more comfortable and provide whatever your guest needs. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's a great point. Um, one other thing I, I would like to ask you, since you've stayed at so many different places, how do you choose the place where mm -hmm. you want to stay? What do you look at? Do you look at reviews or do you look at the pictures, the location? What's, what's most important to you? The first thing that I look at is, does it have reviews? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't have at least two or three reviews, then I don't even consider it. The second thing I look at is price. Third thing I look at is location. Right. And uh, th that's pretty much all I need. I mean, I don't really care too much. Like I said, I'm usually there to sleep and shower. And mm -hmm. uh, if it's even if it's a couch, you know, I, I stayed on a lot of couches. And, you know, I'm, I'm weird in the fact that, I get the best sleep when I sleep on a hard floor just because it helps my back or whatever. Like I, I don't, I'm like, I don't need a nice bed. I don't need anything. I just need a blanket and a pillow. Like I'm good. <laughs> and, uh, but, and you know, I haven't slept on any floors of course, but I would, right. <laughs> um, people should start opening up their, their floors for additional revenue. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the progression I go through. And it really comes down to a combination of those three things. It has to be, of course, in my budget. It has to be uh, economically feasible. It has to be uh, in, a, in a good, safe location. Those two things, and then we're good. Right. So for people starting out with Airbnb hosting, it's really important to get those first couple of reviews in. Mm -hmm. And as, as Austin mentioned, and, and I think that this is true for a lot of people, if a place doesn't have any reviews, then it's people don't feel comfortable staying there because they don't know what yeah. to expect, right? Yeah. So once, as you start as an Airbnb host, I mean, someone has to be the first one to mm -hmm. stay, right? So it's impossible to start with a number of reviews, but what you can do is you can lower your price in, in the, at the very beginning, and um, and that way you might attract people who are willing to forego on the fact that there's no reviews because they're getting a really good price. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see, what's, uh, what are the, some of the places outside of the U.S. that you've, that you've traveled to using Airbnb? Uh, Thailand was the only one that I actually used Airbnb, but there's, it's, it was amazing. I was like, you know, I wonder if Airbnb is over in Thailand. And then I looked and there's hundreds of options in Phuket, right. of Thailand alone. I was yeah. like, this is amazing. So, uh, my sister and I stayed uh, a couple nights there, but then also over there, the hotels are pretty cheap. It's not inflated as much as the U S and we had some, uh, uh, good relationships with people that we got even half price. So it actually ended up being cheaper from a hotel standpoint, but 99% of the time it, that won't be the case if, it, unless you have uh, some inside relationships or whatever. But again, great experience, clean, the pictures and, and the reviews were, were all spot on. Mm -hmm. uh, it was what we were looking for. So it was amazing. But yeah, to go back to your last point, really, I, I would even say that in the review is, Hey, um, I'm offering a, a discounted price just for a limited time to to have a few people stay here. But then, from yeah. a from a beginner standpoint, as far as a host, I would say you know everybody has concerns or how does this work? Start with somebody that has a lot of reviews, right? Or at least five reviews. Kind of do um, 
you, you don't want to go with somebody sketchy. Or at least I wouldn't personally. But uh, yeah, if you if you lower the price, I mean, people are going to jump on it regardless. So. Right, and that's a good point too. You can mention in your description that you just started out and that yeah. you're you're offering a discount uh, for for a limited amount of time, so that people are not going to think, okay, why has this person? Why doesn't he have any reviews? Yeah. You know, is it is it because people stayed at the place and they didn't like it? Or is this person just starting out? And by letting people know that you're just starting out, you, you'll probably have a better chance of getting some bookings, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we were talking about the, the list of things I go through. I would say the fourth thing that's most important is how quickly you respond. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a huge difference between the people that actually use Airbnb and, and know what they're doing versus those that are kind of shady or, or you just kind of get a bad, a worse feeling about them. But the people that yeah. respond within an hour to every, every time I put a proposal in, every time I ask a question, those people I'm like instantly feel a better connection with. So I think that's really, really important as well. Yeah, I think that's a great point. You want to have a feeling that your host is take going to take care of you. The host yeah. is going to be professional about about his listing, and right. by replying quickly, you communicate that you are on top of things. Right. So absolutely, uh, absolutely, a, a very good point. Now you've mentioned that you earned hosting, but you you told some friends to host. Mm -hmm. Would you would you consider hosting yourself at some point? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I don't own any real estate, or I'm not in one place right now. But as soon as I am, I, I definitely will. And uh, the the one person in, in, in particular I'm talking to right now, as far as talking into uh, hosting, he lives in New York City, and his when you break his his monthly fee down per day, it's well over a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And he travels a lot, and I'm like, man, that's such a, a missed opportunity if you don't take advantage of it. You'd be saving people a lot of money if you even offered it for $150 a night, and you'd be obviously making a lot of money. So it's just an insane opportunity that people really have to evaluate and see the opportunity, and then just get started. Just get started with some people that are, like I said, have reviews. And then once you get that in motion, mm -hmm. you start to see how good of a system, how good of a process it is and, and what the opportunity is. And then you just really start that snowball and people make a lot of money and people actually pay for their rent. I know the last guy I stayed with, he actually made more money than he paid in rent by renting out his rooms. Right. Absolutely. That's, that's totally possible because I think in general you can make at least twice the amount of mm. that you make uh, renting out long term. And this is from my perspective as a, as an owner of an apartment, like I'm making mm. much more than, twice as much on on airbnb than i used to make renting out long term and mm -hmm. in fact i know a former guest on our show his name is diego he's in buenos aires and he rents free apartments he pays the landlord a little bit extra of, of hmm. what, what they would usually charge and he he get he got their consent to rent it out on airbnb and that's how he makes a living Wow. You know, this guy is at university. He's studying to be an engineer, and he's making a full-time income by by just managing free apartments that he doesn't own. And the wow. landlords are happy because they're getting extra rent. They know that they're always gonna gonna get their rent. They mm -hmm. know that people aren't gonna leave. And it's yeah, it's just such a win-win situation. That's amazing. And you're you're also absolutely right about. Some people have an apartment or they have even just a spare room and they go on holiday and it's just their, their house is just sitting there making mm -hmm. nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. even if you rent it out for a couple of weeks or maybe a month, a year when you're, when you're away, you can probably cover most of your travel expenses. Absolutely. So Absolutely. a lot of people don't realize that they, you know, they, they may be sitting on a little gold mine and they're, they're just not mm -hmm. aware of it. But it's also a lot of people are apprehensive um, about Airbnb, you know, staying at somebody's house or having random people from the internet stay at your house. It's just <laughs> something that people aren't used to yet as much, I guess. So mm -hmm. when, when you started using Airbnb as a traveler, were you worried or did you have any apprehension about staying in some random people's place or? I wasn't worried. I think my family was more worried about me than, than <laughs> I was. I mean, I had zero worries to be honest, but, um, 
I could see from a host standpoint how it's probably a little bit scary. And, and mind you, I'm, I'm a male. Uh, and if, if I was a female, it would be a little bit different. You know, maybe I would be worried. But mm -hmm. uh, the first couple people I stayed with were all couples. And right. that's, that, that's a pretty um, low risk uh, type of start, I think, is, is you know, is that. And, you know, if kind of a side point, if I was a single female renting out my place, I would at least put in the picture maybe a, a, a boyfriend or maybe another girlfriend, whatever it is, uh, just to have just to avoid those creeps or if they're out, if they are out there um, from going and trying to stay at your place or whatever. So if there's any opportunity, so I, I don't know, there's a lot of ways around it. And, and one other point we didn't talk about earlier is, is the description. Uh, another thing I looked for is just simple things like fast Wi-Fi And if somebody had a pool, like a lot of times people don't list all the amenities that they have, you know, and there's so many great things like you just add everything that you can because you never know what people are looking for. Some people are looking for a gym. Some people are looking for um, close access to a bus system or whatever it is. Um, but just be really descriptive and, and it's, it's sales, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, That's definitely true. You want to list everything that you have. And you don't want to oversell your place. I would say under promise and over deliver because right. you know that's what people build their expectations on. But definitely, if you uh, all the good features about your apartment, and even if you don't consider it a good feature, just list everything and just provide as much information as you can. Mm -hmm. is uh, is is very uh, very important. Mm -hmm. So Austin. Um, it was really great to uh, to get your perspective and your experiences on uh, on Airbnb hosting. Maybe we can finish this up by uh, having you tell our listeners how they can find out more about you and where people can look and what you have to offer. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a, a podcast myself about money and the mindset. It's called Yo Pro Wealth. Uh, so you can find me at YoProWealth.com. That's Y O P R O wealth.com and then also i just started my own personal site austinnetsley.com and I'll, I'll send you the link jasper so you can put it up because my last name's a little bit challenging to spell <laughs> but uh i'll be coming out with my first book in november and i'm excited about that launch also got a new podcast coming out so if you're interested in money and the mindset piece come find me awesome well we'll put uh, we'll put that in the show notes so that our listeners can uh, can check that out Awesome, uh, Austin. It was really great to have you on the show. And as always, you are for our listeners. If you want to learn more about Airbnb hosting, you can go to getpaidforyourpet.com. You can download the first three chapters of our book for free. If you enjoy listening, you can go to getpaidforyourpet.com slash audio dash book, where you can actually get the full audio version of our book for free. And if you want to get the Kindle version, go to Amazon, search for Get Paid for Your Pad, and you can download it for $9.97. Look out for new episodes every Monday and Thursday. We're going to have some awesome guests coming up in the next few weeks, so keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. Austin, thanks again. It was great having you in the show. And goodbye, everybody. Talk to you next time. Get paid for your pad. Get Get paid for your pet. 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 Get paid for your pet.